to record it. I'm recording now. We can oh, share okay. with you if you want. And we can share it with you. Yeah, that, that's been great. Thanks. Um, as a record. Okay. So, so this is uh, Muni Win. Um, there we are. I, th I think I've, I sent Frank. I've sent you the link. Uh, yeah. With with it, I'm run, I'm running under Windows 10. Um, so let's. I'll go about. I'll start a, a new project, and we'll call it. I've got my glasses on. Um, and we'll call it Was 43, and we'll call it Demo. Um, and so it's pretty straightforward, actually. What I have to do is just um, create the, uh, the, the the work area. Um, Hopefully that's 28, that's the day. So I can import the, um, the various FITS files. There's... Right. <laughs> <laughs> so 93 FITS files are uh, imported. Um, I've just got to tick this little box because I think this just converts them into the right format for being used. Um, and what is that doing in the software when it's... I, I, I think this is just converting it into the user... Um, I don't really know, but I think it just converts it from the FITS file into some usable form within the software. So uh, right. I don't think it changes anything. Um, so those are the 93... Out the header. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the 93 files. Now what I've got to do, I discovered that actually it picks up the time from one of the tags in the in the FITS field um, header, and that's out by seven hours because it's actually the time that's recorded in that block is actually Arizona time. Yeah. So I've got to add seven hours on. Huh. So just adding seven hours. Right. Um, then I've got a, a dark field. A master dark field that I produced from around about a dozen uh, Cecilia Doxy images. So we need to do the master dark. And uh, let me just ask about that master dark. Yeah. Uh, so when you say you made it from a dozen, so you added a dozen and then divided by 12? I believe that's what it does, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I use the I use the the, the mass produced master dark based on the actual screen. Yeah, uh, the, the software. Um, I've got a flat field as well. Um, so I produced this from um, I don't know how many images. Again, using the package, using some WASP fifty two images um, early in the evening when. There are no stars visible, but there was sufficient light to produce a, a flat field. It does help a bit, um, so we can execute that. If I remember right, the, that was an um, a overcast night, if I remember right. Is that correct, Martin? That's, that's correct, yeah. And I've in, in our shared Dropbox area, I've got those master yeah. dark and master and, and flats as well, copies in there. Yeah. Okay, so so we've done that. Now the next thing is to do the run the photometry. Um, there are a number of options that that, I, that we use here for the star detection. Uh, what do I use? Uh, I just come come across these. I can say more later if you want. Um, so run the photometry now. That's going through all ninety three um, bits files. So that's probably looking for a point spread function. Yeah. Dip the, the Gaussian and, and what it sees as a as a star it identifies it for that location. So, yeah. There's no registration going on here yet. Right. So I believe it's just identifying point sources, uh, 150 point sources in the field of view of right. the image. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So you can look at so with just the image. This is just a random one. Here's here's the image. Um, this is. The stars in black that it's picked out. It's those three. Uh, There's the target right there. And then image and, and that. So that's uh, that's that. That's right. Then the next thing is to now. So this is now where you come cross referencing between the various photometry files that have been produced. So 
um, you can select either a frame from the um, the selection or you can prepare a catalog file so you don't each having to keep on putting the comparison and, and variable stars in so if I pick one of those for get the right one was 43 um, and then we click go and now it's just comparing this is the slowest part. Well, no, the slowest part is actually downloading the individual oh, images. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's probably around about a quarter of an hour's worth of clicking. Uh, right. So this is going through. And you're right, and this, this master that it's referencing against, those yeah. were those, uh, uh, Target and check stars that you chose, Martin. No, um, I've got a mix. The ones that I can show you. Out. I can show you when we come to the next stage. Okay. Um, it just makes it a lot easier to actually rather than having to search on the on the actual bits images to find the right stars. So it's just uh, a selection. So there we go. And now, if we go into the plotting a light curve. We'll do ensemble photometry. So what I've so I've, I've got. Let's do. So this is your do it yourself. Yeah, yeah. those are our comparisons. Yep. Uh, and click the button. I found an aperture of around about of two point five is about right. Um, and there we go. Huh. Um. What I did find, and, and so you can, you can very easily change the, change the stars. Um, what I have found is that if I add an extra one, because I can do this, uh, I can add as many stars as I want, um, I get a slightly better curve, uh, apart from here, but it fits better later on. Wow. So, I've got, so I've got that. Uh, I can now save it. But before you go anywhere here, Martin, yeah. can you tell me, uh, so how does the software compute these error bars? What is it? What is that computation? Um, that's Do a we, very good question. That's a yeah. very good question. Um, I, I put in the error bars um, based on, well, I think it's, it's more, let's have a go. I mean, they all do seem to be relatively identical, so it must be it based it on the spread of the overall data set. Yeah, at, at the at the end, yeah, it's based on the um, the um, the data number within each that, that summed in, in the aperture, um, and 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 yeah, I, I think it's probably underestimating a little bit. Right. Um, let huh. me, let me. That's all right. We can, so, I could, we could put that up in the documentation, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've got, I've got the reference for the um, software that, that I, I can send you. Um, but, but let's, okay, let's go, let's do, um, let, let's, let's do your own, your DIY now. Okay. So here we are. So this is using your two comparison stars. Um, so what I now do is I, I can save it. I just need to save it as an ETD format. So this is essentially just the Julian date, uh, the uh, the V minus C and, and the error. So I'll show you that. There. So we save that into there. Um, what I let's just what I did today. Close that one and reduce that down. Um, so I can go, so what I tend to use is the um, ETD, the extrasolar or exoplanet transit database, which I can actually put the images in, but, I, but I've also found that if I run a, if I smooth the data, which I can, which I'll show you now, um, Excel. Should be able to find. Okay. 
So so. This, this is an output from what you just did. Yeah, this, this is, this is a, not, not quite yet. This is just an Excel spreadsheet that will um, produce just copies of the raw data when I've, when I've, I've cut and pasted it in. It, it's it's a averages, a running, a running average across, which I found is quite useful. Um, so if I just uh, open, this is not very good for the right things. What is it? Where are we? Uh, our loss. So this is the the output. Your image uh, space. So this is the output from that from the reduction. Um, the three columns. So if I just copy. And and v minus c. Yeah, it's a variable minus the um, ensemble for comparison. So okay. I'm, I'm, okay. I can. I can convert it to the magnitude, well, proper, it's, it's in magnitudes. Um, so let me just copy that. Uh, I hate this. So fingers crossed now, because I did do it before. Um, so I've got, I can produce, um, a series of curves depending on the smoothing. So the red, I've only just joined them up so you can actually you can see them. So the red is the raw data that's come out from the reduction. Um, green is I've smoothed it by just have a running um, average of two data points. Yeah. Um, the purple, this lilac one, is with three data points, and then the bottom one is actually binning pairs of data points. Yep. Um, it kind of just tidies it up a little bit. Yeah. Um, so what I can then, so, so, so that's essentially all of what's happening in these correction. In these, I, I can, I take the magnitude, I convert it to a raw flux, add it and or average it and then convert it back to a magnitude. Um, and um, something similar with the with the error that goes on. Um, happy with that? Uh, I go back to the converting it to a raw flux. Yep. What's so, the how d is that done? Uh, Ten to the power of uh, minus zero point four times the magnitude. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Okay, and then and then do the averaging, and then convert back to a magnitude for the later use. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't make all that much difference, but I think it's a bit more exact. Um, okay. Yeah. So that's, that's with that. So, so what I then produce is a, a series of columns that I can then use within the ETD in the Exoplanet Transit Database. That because what do they ask for? They ask for date, magnitude, and error. And and so why are you not using your original data? It just gives it a, I, will, I, I can do, yeah. You I, could, I, you could. I, it's just yeah. that you're giving them the... It, it's just slightly smooth because it, it just gives a, a slightly better fit to the... I uh, see. I yeah, see. Um, I did quite a lot with spent. I've I've done all all four various ways of for the um, H eighteen P thirty two, um, and, and come to the conclusion that actually probably smoothing it uh, with, with this th running average over three, with a, with a window of three, is probably probably the best because it is quite it's noisy it is, it is noisy data but then that's not surprising um so if i just go down here and just that and copy 
like that. And yeah. I've got to go into Notepad, paste that, save as, and I've got this right. Here we go. I'll, go, I'll just paste it into there. Okay, so I've just saved it now as a ASCII text file. Yep. And what I can now do is go into to here. So this is the, the Czech um, Exoplanet Transit Database. So I pick out Course 43. Course 43. I'm going to choose my file, which is the one we've just produced. Um, fingers crossed. Yep, it's got it in the right place. Um, I go with so you, you can uh, using the the site, you can either. Uh, set what the, the mid-transit date is, or you can ask it to find it, so that's on. Uh -huh. You can set the transit duration, or you can ask it to find it, so I'm asking it to find that, and likewise for the, um, the transit depth. So I'm asking it to find all, all of those three parameters. Um, it produces limb darkening, I'm just using the default value uh, at present. Um, can you press compute? Fingers crossed. Oh, that I'm using. Uh, there's a linear um, trend correction as well. And so and that, it's it's making that trend correction. Yeah. Based so, on the Julian date and its knowledge of the altitude of the star at that point. I don't think it's that clever. I think it's it's just there is a document that, that details it. Uh, um, it's just taking it's just taking that and it's it's finding there's a trend. You've got the, two options. You can the, either okay, it's finding the slope and it's detrending and then detrending. Yeah, but you can you can have it. Um, that's that's the linear. There's the other method which you can have a if it's going kind of if it's curved, mm, but it still treats it as a line. It's it's got limitations and those are recognized. Yeah. Um, that looks pretty go. good. So there we go. That that's what we've got. The, the um, we can then show it in the actual transit database. And okay, so this is the uh, epoch observed minus calculated. So it's a little bit late. Um, right. Slightly longer transit duration uh, and slightly. Greater depth than the, um, than the, the what well, it should be, essentially. But it's quite right. good. I think that was quite good. Yes. Um, and that's it. Wow. Yeah. Now, so what would you so what would you call the data quality of this particular SWAS forty three yeah. set? This this one is a. It, it shows you here, but it, it calculates. Oh, they quality. calculate it based on ah. a data quality of three, which is essentially that's the mean absolute deviation of the points from the curve. Uh, and that's the it's a function of, of the mean absolute absolute deviation and the uh, data sampling at 0.32 data points a minute, which is every three minutes, essentially. And so when we look on here, oh, go away, go away, go away, go away. Um, so, so this is, they, they, they produce these nice little things. So it, it's about the middle. Yep, yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's it. Um, what I did find was that if I used, uh, used more stars, as I can show you now, um, that, that I can that actually I can bring that that value down a little bit. 
So it's, it's the choice of using, do we use two comparison stars or yeah. as I did for uh, 32, I used uh, eight. Right. Right, and so uh, that's affecting the, the date because, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think one of the, pro the problem is because it's quite, because it's quite noisy. Yeah. Sometimes, uh, it, sometimes it has difficult, the algorithm has difficulty actually identifying uh, the midpoint. Yeah. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I, I, I put through that smoothing um, just to, to, to try and improve that. It, it, it's, a, it's a recognized limitation. I've, I've seen there's a paper um, that, that does recognize that the, this, this approach has got limitations. Uh, the other way is I haven't tried it yet is there's Astro Image J. Yes. That's that's the other way to uh, look at the data, but I haven't I haven't got my head around that yet. That's that's something for, for the future. Yeah, we have um, we got our Sonoma collaborators using Astro Image J that they put this photometry package in, and yep. she was wondering if. JS9, we might talk to oh, Eric. Eric at some point in the future about that. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, yeah there, is, there is a couple, there is a speaker that came through about two months or so ago at the Exo Pizza Lunch. And Joey uh, Rodriguez was saying this is an excellent package for these advanced learners or collegiates taking FITS data and get it, getting nice photometry routines and particularly for curve fitting. Uh, Muni win. No, the, the Astro Image Astro J. Astro Image J. Uh, yeah. Okay. Which, yeah, I downloaded the package, but I haven't explored it yet. And yeah. Right. I defer to Martin there. Right, <laughs> right. We'll let, yeah. we'll let him. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He, for comparison with, with Muni. Yeah, I've got my, um, I've, I've got it on the, on the system, on the, on the laptop here. Um, it's, it's actually the same image J as what I use for my, uh, my amber insects, my prehistoric oh, insects. Yeah. It's the same image processing, but, it, but it's got uh, the Astro plugin. So that's something I, I will try um, and, and do a comparison because I've got lots of data now to, to compare. Now, I... I wanted to ask you, I see that the exoplanet, the site, you can, imp you input your spreadsheet in um, units of magnitude, but it looks like it would allow flux. Yes, you can do flux as well. So let's, let's open it in a different uh, new tab. No, don't open it in a new tab. Oh, no, let's open it here. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So you you, you can put in um, geocentric, heliocentric date, Julian date, or magnitude or flux. So you can uh, you, you can put put your flux data in. I'm just thinking. Aren't our aren't our numbers flux? Your what from DIY? Yeah. Yeah, that that will be flux, isn't it? Because it's just data numbers. It, it, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Should be. And so, see, I'm thinking we can we can generate this data file. Right. And I just want to know the routine for the error. Yeah. The uh, okay. Um, Uh, I can, right, let's, uh, but I'm, I can I can find you the page. There is there's the. Uh, is there a reference for computing? Yeah, yeah there's a, there's a reference. Oh no 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 we don't go there. I thought there. you said I yeah. Hmm. We go here. The, it, it's actually on the soft. Well, where is that? The software has some. 
the software manual has some yeah uh routine yeah i'm just trying to think where I'll have a look, but I've, I've said that there's a, there's a published um, document, which is uh, no, I'll, I'll have to find I'll, I'll find it, uh, but I, I can I can send you send you the link to it okay that'd be great uh, yeah but there's there's one and then there's a there's a, a more slightly more technical document right uh, will, well, i'm sure will answer your um answer your things i didn't contact let's have a look here i know i, stum I stumbled across it here we go oh no no it's referencing the right okay, so this is Ah, okay. So that's the, um, there's a PDF for, the, for that. So you, you can get that, but there's also, um, there's another document as well, but I'll, I'll have a look. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, huh. now, do you think is, Frank, is there going to be a time at which these master darks and flats are going to stop? Well, if I switch out the instrument. Right. Is so gonna have to and we'll have to reproduce that again, wait for a cloudy night, uh, or I can try to squeeze in some sky flats, but those are always hard to get. Uh, yeah, it's probably because it goes quick. Right. The transitions really quick. Uh, uh, but the darks we can we can do easily. Right. I right. just load the queue with darks. Yeah. Uh, or just sum up, you know, a week's worth of darks. Yeah. Yeah, that's essentially what I did. I just took um, just downloaded them because you, you collect two and nine. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Dozen or so. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, now, Martin, that the the uh, link I gave you with the archive uh, yes. to help save you click time. Right. Um, I've I've had a I've had a I think I'm still having to click on it because I go by. Oh, oh, right. You have to. I yeah. There's no badge in. mode. Yeah, click download. Right. Yeah. You have to download each file. Anyway, right, yeah. okay, yeah. Yeah, but um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> where's the mouse at? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to get get um, cut off in about four minutes because I've only got 40 minutes um, time per session. So we might have to just... Uh, well, uh, this should be, off. you should be on my account, which allows oh, right. longer. <laughs> All right. Well, if, if you lose me, that's yes. Well, well, okay. Yeah. We'll come right back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. So so we, we actually pay for this, right? Oh yeah. 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 yeah so we actually pay for this. <laughs> we we have a paid subscription. So because you used a link from us, I think. We should yeah. be good. Yeah. <laughs> um, we'll see. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right. Then, yeah. If I don't get what I'm paying for, I'm going to be upset. Um, ah, uh, this is this has been really helpful. Thank you so much. Um, what are you? There, there is this follow-on to publish into the e, ETD. Yeah. To our our, and I shared this link with you. The the uh, JPL site that is working with Bruce Gary and about yes. publishing uh, yeah. amateurs uh, data for exoplanet curves, but I don't know where where that effort is on their end, let alone us communicating as a partner. Well, I actually have a meeting with the person who's their exoplanet person coming up on the phone in a couple weeks. Okay. So I'll be able to check in with them about that and that say, process. yeah, okay. Yeah. 
Because on some of those targets, what's the name of that set? It's the Yeah, Planet. here I'll I'm gonna share I'm gonna share my screen now. I, I think okay. I, I, oh, right. I I think I get to stop your screen. Right. And then I'll um you can show him the data. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah there's my because he hasn't been in Excel Lab. If I remember right. Oh right, he's only been in DIY, DIY. here. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah, sorry about DIY, yeah. Um, so, uh, um, yeah, so here, if I look at WASP 43, um, You, and you see down here, oh, they don't have it for, yeah, see a lot of them, they don't have, right. it doesn't appear, wait, is it, is this? no, that's not, that's not what I was looking for. Uh, let's try a different one here. Um, if then, the, yeah, if I the go, Trez, right? yeah, Trez, Trez 3. Um, here we are. <clears throat> yeah, so here you see that they, they allow amateur contributed light curves. Okay. Here. And oh, yeah. um, All right. uh, and so there's this there's this reference about um, their model fitting thing and the description of the header. Yep. All right. okay. um, but it's unclear what the minimum You know what the minimum header they want. I'm having a little trouble finding it here. Yeah. Uh, Cause this is, this is information about their fitting routine. Yeah. But it's not, you know, and, and okay. somehow they don't have information about how you can upload your, right. your um, data. Right. And that, this looks very similar. The, 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 um, the pictures you're showing are very similar to there's a paper by Bruce, I can't remember what his name, Bruce. Bruce Gary. Yeah, Bruce Gary. Bruce Gary is yeah. actually, he's yeah. partnered with him with, yeah. with this, with the JPL folks. Yeah, this is yeah, the. He, has, he, has a, he uses a spread, quite mandrolic spreadsheet that he uses, which is probably at that uh, uh, hyperlink. You've got just after you've highlighted, I think. Okay. Yeah. This here. Yeah, there you go. Yes. Yeah. This is right. Yeah. So Bruce was hosting data for a while and he wanted to essentially give it to someone. And mm -hmm. he worked out a partnership with the uh uh the Exoplanet Archive. The this NASA Exoplanet this Archive I've, group. Uh, to bring in essentially uh, amateur data into their database. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's not clear. It's still a work in progress, though, from what, what we can see. Right. Yes. Wait, here's contributed data. Where's... This is yeah. yeah, that's. This is, I was yeah, there before, too, right. and it just yeah, says that. That's not right. Yeah, yeah so. Um, formally archived. So I think I think that this is just data from his former, former thing and there's site. there's currently no interface for uploading. It's it, all data sh files should be submitted to the check, <laughs> right? So yeah. um so I think uh, especially given that we can point to your 
uploads of microobservatory data on that check site, mm -hmm. there might be a they, <laughs> they, they might be willing to, yeah. uh, because we do have this education partnership with them, to kind of create a special port for microobservatory exoplanet data. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we want to. That's be good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because I, I'm I'm thinking of because I'm want, I'm wanting to to write up uh, the work that I did with HATB 32. Right. What around about 20, 23, 24 tracks. And I was going to archive them to the check site. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so that would be, yeah. Um, so, uh, and this is obviously before 43 yeah. was discovered because right. it doesn't have, I mean, right. He essentially stopped updating this back in 2013, 14, okay. that time era. Okay. And so I think, right, that's. Um, I don't, you know, well, I can't interpret, I can't interpret it. <laughs> Julian <laughs> date, Julian but, on right. the but <laughs> yeah, but I don't know what PLC. You'll say Kepler cam. So these are all, these are, right. Yeah, well, those, that's from Whipple. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's off the meter, the meter right. point, too. And, uh, right. Um, huh. Yeah, so this is a. This is up on the mountain, Martin. Mm -hmm. Yep. One of the scopes up on the mountain, which right yeah. near Cecilia. Yep. Mm -hmm. Huh. Oh, uh -huh, that's kind of fun. Um. Okay. Well. Any other things for now? I think. No. Unless oh, you want to oh, show. Oh, I do the want to show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, and if you have questions about this interface and and what's going to be happening in these, this workshop for educators and yep. so in, who, who they are, et cetera. Right. <laughs> Any questions you have, Mark. Yeah. Right. So we're, the teachers we're working with aren't using the DIY, but they're using this laboratory for the study of exoplanets. Yeah. yeah I've, ha I've had a, a, a little poke around in there. And yeah. And so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we built this specifically for, for teachers. Yes. And, um, we, this is, this is a link to this, uh, online community, which we're now asking you to be a part of. Mm -hmm. And, uh, this is that we're going to give you, this is, uh, the Exolab educators community and, um, okay. it has, Ooh, it's gonna, I didn't do, yes, I didn't do that. Well, we'll, yeah. yeah, we'll, we'll get you on to here. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh but the um you know but in this lab so this morning you know i in my account i had all these wasp 43 yep uh images and i graphed some as a student this is a mm. i'm simulating being a student here um, and I can kind of change the aspect ratio of the, oh, of the thing. So I've only done a few, but my class, the other people in my class have done all these. Yep. And so you can see, I mean, I have a, a light curve that comes out similar to yours. On the, okay. yep. Right. Um, and, uh, and then the other thing that we talk to teachers about is evaluating the quality of the data from the components, the raw data, where you get some idea of signal to noise. Yes. So yeah. that this is the, this, these are your raw measurements of the background. Yeah. And uh, the target star is green and the two comparison stars are the red. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so your signal to noise for the target is pretty good on this, whereas we have some nights, you know, where they're really close together. Yes. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. And likewise, yep. we, the, the altitude, yeah, you know, yeah. toward, towards the end, it's getting pretty low in the sky. Yep. Um, so, so, so this, you know, has these various uh, tools for helping students interpret, interpret yep. uh, what they've got and whether they've detected a transit. Um, and then in the, uh, and there's a modeling lab that they use at the beginning of the unit where they can predict, you know, yeah. With by I'm actually dragging this to predict what I think is going to happen, mm -hmm. right? And later on yep. in that modeling lab, there's actually a um, a simulation here. So if I make this faster and hit the simulate button, yep. right? So. Anyway, it will, it, um, and students are always surprised when they get their data and, uh, whoops, I gotta choose something here, show my list. They get their data and it looks nothing like that nice yeah, yes. <laughs> thing that their textbooks have always said is what a transit looks like, you know. I'm always very surprised. So in this data lab, we actually uh, sh provide them with tools to, um, you know, ask them to highlight where they think the yep. where they mm -hmm. think the transit duration is yep. to compare it to the astronomers predicted. Mm -hmm. And here's where. You know, your all your observed minus computed, you can see the lag there. Yes. Right. Yep. Um there's also a model fitting tool that we have. Okay. Yep. But it's a simplified model. Yeah. Right? It doesn't have the curve, it that it doesn't do the trend or anything. Um and uh it's it's actually calculating it's you, what you're trying to do is minimize this score which is the sum of the distances of all those gray lines from the yep. data yep. Yep. um and so let me and you can keep resetting it to best but if i let's say reset the best and then i can possibly get lower than that but i don't think i can it looks like anyway so that then you compute the um, size based on this level of dip. Yep. And there's actually a, uh, somewhere here, is it this one? Yeah. So, um, uh, this kind of lets you see. I rock, yes, yep how a different dip would Given represent a different size compared to Jupiter. Yeah. Hmm. So this is the interface that all the teachers will be learning about, but some of them are actually, um, some of them are community college astronomy uh, teachers uh -huh. who may want to do they may want to be able to download the data and do a different kind of analysis. Yep. And so your experience doing that will be really important for them. Yep. Um, and some of them are, you know, earth science teachers who have very little experience with real data analysis. So all the scaffolding of this curriculum uh, really helps them. And everybody in between. And then we have everybody in between. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So um, anyway, I think 
Frank yeah. wanted to show you that. Will, uh, you should be getting an email from our colleague Erica uh, with with um, information about this webinar that we're going to be doing at two times tomorrow, three thirty. It'll be quite late your time, three thirty in the afternoon here. Yeah, eight thirty. Yes. Yeah. And then so we're doing yeah. right, and then we're doing another one at six thirty p.m. Should you be a <laughs> night owl? Yes. But that's because we have teachers in California. Yeah. Yep. Um, we actually have someone in Australia too. Right. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And someone in Alaska. So right. Right. So yeah. Um. So you. Uh, um. On that. You know, this this is a webinar really to give an overview to the educators about this project and about the um, educator community site that I just showed you. It's kind of the start of uh, the next four to five weeks when we'll be holding online discussions with teachers who want to use it uh, about tips and tricks and we'll be doing weekly webinars. Okay. Uh, on Wednesdays, so we're recording these. Right? Um, Are we? Playing? Yes, and we're recording the, uh, all these webinars. Actually, I don't need to be recording this. What we're recording right now, I'm going <laughs> to. Actually, I realize I'm going to stop. Although maybe we did stop the recording. What do I know? I don't know if I'm still recording it or not. I can't tell. Oh, it's over here. Oh, here we are. Yeah, I guess. Yes. Uh, pause, stop.